Hi, I'm Chris, and this is a quick feature video to show off the improved integration between Adventure Creator and Unity's Timeline. Timeline is a sequencing tool in Unity, and with 2018.3, it's really improved a lot with the track offsets feature. And so AC version 1.66 and onwards brings with it a number of improvements for working with Timeline for your cutscenes. And to demonstrate these features, the 3D demo has been updated if you're using 2018.3 or later. And it's been updated to use Timeline for both its opening and closing cutscenes. So it's identical in appearance, but if I just run the scene, we've got this, uh, this opening cutscene. And if I pause it, we can actually open up the director's folder. I'll find intro one. This is a playable director. And if I double click, you'll see we've got this timeline running. So coming out of play mode, let's have a closer look at this. Um, a lot of the tracks here, these are all put into groups, but a lot of the tracks here are just standard Unity timeline tracks. We've got an animation on brain, uh, we've got audio for the sound effects and music, but we've got a few new tracks that AC provides as well. The first of these is the main camera track, and this is very similar to the way Cinemachine works in Timeline, in that we've got our main camera, and we basically assign an AC game camera to each clip. So here we've got Intro Cam 1, and we assign that in the Clips Inspector. And when the timeline is over this clip, the main camera will kind of copy itself to this Intro Cam 1's position and camera settings. So let me demonstrate with another shot. If I make some space here and I'll right click, I'll choose add from camera. And let's do maybe um, a brain cam one. And then when we hover over this shot, we then cut to this new camera. And this also supports blending. So if I make a transition, we'll get a smooth blending between the two cameras. This also supports blending into nothing. So if I go to the end of this clip here, and I give it an ease out duration, then as we come out of it, the main camera will basically go back to wherever it's supposed to be during normal gameplay. And this is useful for creating nice transitions between gameplay and cutscenes. The other track type we've got, of course, is this speech track. This is how we're playing speech here. So if I go to um, my brain group, I've got this brain speech track and two clips, one for each line and each clip has the text of the speech line within its inspector, and the character it's assigned to is done within the inspector of the track. And this is done so that it's all compatible with the speech manager, so we're able to get translations and speech audio processing automatically. One thing to note is that when we assign the speaker, we have to do so using the speaker prefab. So we've got our brain NPC prefab, and that's what I'm assigning into the speaker prefab field here. And when we do that, it will record that prefab's constant ID number, and then use that to find the actual scene instance of the NPC at runtime. If we want the player to speak the line, we can just check player line, and that'll come automatically from the, uh, the player prefab that's in our settings manager. And we also have this playback mode field, and it has two options, natural and clip duration. And natural means that the speech will play as soon as it hits uh, the start of the clip in the timeline, and it will last as long as it would normally if we were using, say, an action to play it. It's not going to consider the length of the clip itself. But if we change this to clip duration, it'll mean that the speech is only active on the screen while the timeline is over the clip itself. So we come off the clip and it will stop playing the speech. And this is useful if we want really fine control over the timing of subtitles um, in relation to other animation. You'll also notice we've got a preview of the subtitles in edit mode, and that's coming from um, both the speech and the menu manager. So if I go to the Speech Manager, we've got this new field 
called Subtitle Preview Menu, and here I've entered in the name Subtitles. And that's the name of the menu I want to preview the subtitles in. So if I go to the Menu Manager, I can see that I've got this Subtitles menu listed here. This is all part of the default interface, and then it's going to use this Subtitles menu as the basis for any previews within the timeline. So this timeline is being played back in our Play Intro 1 cutscene. And you can see in that we've got this engine controlled timeline action. And here we are playing the Intro 1 playable director. We're playing it from the beginning. And we've also checked remap bindings. And if I do that, we can see a list of all of the tracks that are in that timeline. And if I select any one of them, I can optionally rebind that track to a specific game object. And the reason that I'm remapping the bindings here is because if I go to Player Animation, I can check Bind to Player. And the reason I'm doing that is because the player is not actually in the scene file itself. So I've got my player here, Tinpot. He's set in the Settings Manager as the default player, and so he's going to be spawned in runtime automatically. Now we could have him optionally in the scene and then just um, have all the tracks bound to the player uh, by default, but this option allows us to remove him from the scene and still have the timeline play as it should. Something else that's very important for the timelines to work is character positioning. And if I skip to the second intro timeline, um, I can demonstrate a bit better. So we have Brain here, he's starting it in a fixed position. And he's moving over to this chair here. And we also have the player, similarly he's starting in a fixed position. When we exit the game, he transitions nicely into that starting position for our gameplay. So to achieve that, um, we have root motion on both of our characters. And if we have a look at the timeline for this, um, this cutscene, our characters have track offset values of apply transform offsets. And this means that their objects will always start in the same position, no matter where they were when the timeline begins. So he's always going to start at this point here, and then he's using root motion to move around the scene. I have noticed that there is a bit of unreliability if a character relies on a rigid body. So with Brain, I've removed his rigid body since he doesn't actually need one. And with the player, Tin Pot, I've replaced his capsule collider and rigid body with a character controller so that he can still react to colliders and gravity. Now it may be that, particularly if you're using a custom motion controller, that you need to do some extra tweaking uh, when they enter a timeline, in which case you can hook into a custom event that basically triggers whenever a character is placed on the timeline. So as an example script, we have uh, this one that basically just um, triggers any time a character is on a timeline. So I'll demonstrate that by creating a new object and just drag that into the scene. And when I click play mode, um, you can see it's recording that both Brain and Tinpot are on timelines. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope it was useful and that it helps people who are looking to make use of timeline for their AC projects. Thanks for watching.